Welcome back everyone to this lecture on the date time index. We're going to begin by talking about the basics of a Python date time object, and then we'll look at both NumPy date time arrays and NumPy date ranges, as well as Pandas date time index and Pandas date time analysis tools. Okay, let's get started and hop over to a notebook. Okay, here I am in a notebook and built into normal Python, you don't need an external library for this, is the ability to create a date time object. So what I'm going to do is say from date time import date time. And I know that sort of import language is a little weird that there happened to be named the same thing, date time, date time. And that is a common complaint between users of this library, but that's just the way it's built in Python. So go ahead and do this. We'll say from date time, import date time. And then to illustrate the order of arguments, I'm going to create quite a few variables here. We'll go ahead and create the year. So we'll say my year is 2020. We'll say my month is one, so that's January. We'll say my day, we'll go ahead and say the 2nd of January. And then we can actually then specify hours. So it has date information, which are these first three terms, the day, the month, and the year. And then we also have time information, such as the hour. We can say my minute, I'll just say my min, and we'll say that's uh, 30 minutes. And then my seconds, we'll say 15 seconds. And notice the hour is going to take a 24 hour format. So something between zero and 24. Okay, so there's our variables. Now let's actually create a date time object. So if I just create something like my date, I can call date time. And if you do shift tab here, you'll notice that it takes in arguments in this order, year, the month, and the day. So that's what it needs in order to have date information. And then it can have various time information, such as the hour, the minute, the second, and it can even take information on the microsecond level, as well as time zone information. But let's just start off with the basics and create a date time object with just date information. We'll say my year, my month, you can use tab to autocomplete this, and then my day. So go ahead and run this. And when you ask for my date back, you should get full information, including an hour and a minute. So when you're using a date time object, but you don't prescribe an hour, minute, or second level of information, Python will automatically set those as zero. So this is essentially just the start of the day for January 2nd in 2020. And this is still a date time object and it contains time information, but it defaulted time to zero, zero. So now let's go ahead and make another date. We'll go ahead and say my date time. And just like before, we'll go ahead and pass in these three parameters, my year, my month, and my day. Notice the order, but then we'll also pass in some time information, such as my hour, my minute, and my second. And now if we take a look at this object, my date time, this now has information at the time stamped level. So we have the date, January 2nd, 2020, and it happened at 1300 hours, 30 minutes, and 15 seconds, which is the same as 1.30 p.m. and then 15 seconds after that. Now what's really nice about this is these objects, if you take a look at them, my date, do dot, and then hit tab. And again, this is after you define the object in a cell above, you'll have a bunch of attributes that you can call as well as lots of methods. But we'll focus on the attributes for now. So for example, if you have this date time object, so my date time, and you wanted to know okay, uh, what day was this? You can say dot day, shift enter, and it will return back the day of the month. And you can do the same things for stuff like hour, and there's built-in attributes for each of these inserts that we, or parameters that we provided. Okay, so I previously mentioned that NumPy handles dates more efficiently than Python's date time format. And the NumPy data type is called date time 64, and that distinguishes it from Python's built-in date time object. So if we actually said, what type of object is this my date time? It's date time dot date time. But now let's check out um, what NumPy has available for us. I'm going to say import NumPy as MP. And then I'm going to create an array from three dates. And I'm gonna pass in the dates as string code. So I'll say NP array. And I'm just gonna pass in, let's say 2020, 0315, and then a couple more, we'll say the year 2020, 
and then we'll do March 16th, and then the year 2020, we'll say March 17th. So here I have three dates, and I pass them in as strings. If I just run this, then NumPy is going to treat these as normal strings. But if I say dtype whoops, is equal to, and I say date time 64, where the 64 stands for 64 bit, and I run this. Now NumPy is smart enough to recognize that these are now date time objects. Now you may have noticed that there's actually an extra letter here when NumPy reports this date time back. And this capital D stands for day. And this basically tells us that NumPy has applied a day level date precision. Now, if you wanna pass in a different level of precision, you can actually pass in as a code here in square brackets after date time 64, you can pass in something like Y, capital Y for year precision. And basically that means regardless of these timestamp codes, just go ahead and only keep precision up to a year, 2020. And because this is a standard format for dates, the year, dash, the month, dash, a day, NumPy can handle that. Keep in mind, it can't automatically handle um, any type of string. If that's the case, you will need to provide it a format code, which we'll talk about later on. But just to show you what I mean, if you provide a Y here inside the brackets, inside that string, you'll see that now we only keep the date, or excuse me, the year level precision. If you want more precision, you can say something like a lowercase h for hour, and when you run that, you'll notice it begins to actually take into account hours and minutes with this kind of timestamp. But in this case, we didn't provide any, so again, defaults to zero. Okay, now let's talk about NumPy date ranges. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you that, if you recall, we have NP arrange, which takes a start, a stop, and a step size. And we've seen this before with just integers, such as zero, 10, two, and that produces uh, an array of integers going from zero to 10 in step size of two. What's really cool about this is you can actually pass in this exact same type of code, but with dates. So what I'm going to do is inside NP range, I can do the following. I can say starting from 2018-06-01 as my start, then go to 2018-06-23, and then I'm going to say, take a step size of seven. And now you may be wondering, well, seven what? Seven years, seven days, seven months? In order to actually specify what units the step size is in, that's where we need to specify in particular D type. So we need to say date time, 64 bit. And then in those square brackets, we need to pass in the right letter code in order to specify the unit size. It's gonna be capital D for days, lowercase h for hours, or if you want, you can even do uh, capital Y for years. Keep in mind though, that when you're specifying this data type in conjunction with your step size, it should make sense for the start and stop. So if I were to say, do seven years in between uh, these two timestamps, that doesn't really make sense because there's not seven years in between these guys, they're in the same year. So I'm going to say capital D, since that makes sense because essentially I'm asking here for a week give me seven days step size between these two dates, which is a week. Seven days is one week. So when you run this, notice we get back the first here, then seven days later, the eighth, and then another seven days later, the 15th, and another seven days later, the 22nd. And these can be then used as like start of the week. So by omitting the step value, we can actually obtain every single value based on whatever precision we want. So for example, I could say something like, 1968, and then let's just choose a year to have it be a little closer, like 1976. And then I'm going to not actually specify the step size. Instead, I'm only gonna specify the data type, and then I'm gonna specify Y for year. And what this does is it basically just tells NumPy, okay, return back every single uh, unit here in between the start and the stop. So every single year between 1968 in 1976. And you want to be careful of this because if you passed in H, that would return back every single hour between 1968 and 1976, which is a lot of data points. So just be careful of that. We'll go ahead and do capital Y, run that, and here we can see every year. Okay, so that is the NumPy date range. And Pandas is actually built off of this sort of 
functionality. So what we're going to do is show you how to use a pandas date time index, as well as date time index frequencies, and some pandas date time analysis. So coming up in part two, we'll shift our focus to pandas from this NumPy foundation. I'll see you in the next lecture.